Judging by the number of emails I get from people with the next big color idea, everyone thinks they can help the colorblind. But when you mix that helpful attitude with a complete disregard for how colorblindness works or affects us, you get laughably useless tools like Fruitone. Fruitone was a prototype for a color vision aid that was intended to help us colorblind folk tell when fruit is ripe. But when I saw it, my BS detector went on full volume. Identifying ripe fruit is indeed one of the most universal hurdles experienced by the colorblind, prominently difficulties between green and yellow bananas. For bananas and several other fruits with color as a ripeness indicator, a tool for effectively interpreting the color could be quite helpful. Unfortunately for us, Fruitone was no such thing. So how did it work? Fruitone was essentially a book of paint chips where each card would include the colors of a given fruit's development from unripe to overripe. Each color was described by a Pantone color. So now you see where the name comes from. Pantone, Fruitone, A-level branding. Pantone is a proprietary list of colors with huge licensing fees that has been little more than a money printing scheme for the past half century, but I digress. The intended use of fruit tone was that you take them shopping or foraging or, or dumpster diving, no judgment. Then you compare the color of your prospective snack to the color on the color chip, ostensibly determining the ripeness in the process. But this system completely misunderstood what color blindness is. Color blindness is not a mental illness where we can't remember what color a ripe banana is. Hell, even fully achromatic people, those who have never experienced color, know that bananas are yellow, even if they don't even know what yellow really is. Norwegian achromat Knut Nordby was Oliver Sacks' companion during the filming of Island of the Colorblind, and this is what he had to say about bananas. I think this is a sort of greenish thing, but um, that's probably because I know what it is. Bananas usually are yellow. If they, the internals of a banana is yellow too, I wouldn't know, but it's, I guess it was yellowish. So he knows that ripe bananas are yellow because colorblindness is not about being ignorant of color. Rather, colorblindness is the effect of two colors that appear distinct to a color normal person to appear the same to me. Hence why banana green and banana yellow are just both banana grello in my books and I can't differentiate ripe from starchy. But what happens when I'm armed with a fruitone banana card? Watch out world, I'm buying bananas with confidence. The card supposes that green bananas will color match to this square and yellow bananas will color match to this square. And this is true for color normals and is also true for the colorblind too. But if we throw a colorblind simulation on the scene, a banana at any state of ripeness will match both the green and yellow references regardless. So I'm no closer to identifying whether the banana will taste good and I just pick up a donut instead. And there are so many fruits that according to Fruitone, change color with ripeness, avocado, melon, kiwis. It's just not a change I've ever been able to detect, as you can tell from the Fruitone cards on your right, that are simulated to appear as a colorblind person would see them. There are some fruits where I do see a difference in color at each stage of ripening, including passion fruit, nectarines, and tomatoes. Yeah, tomatoes that famously turn from green to red can be seen by lots of people with red-green color blindness. Silly, right? But if I can perceive the color change, why do I need a color reference to help me tell if it's ripe? Sure, buying some obscure fruits for the first time may benefit from this system. I have bought passion fruit exactly one time before, had no idea what to look for in terms of color, and they were indeed far from ripe when I got them home. Fruitone could have helped me there but not as much as it could have helped a color normal person in the exact same passion fruit buying virgin situation. Though in that case, Fruitone is not a colorblind aid, it's a color normal aid. There is a reason Fruitone never got off the ground and it seems kind of pointless to kick them when they're down, but I just hope that by presenting my line of reasoning here for why so many colorblind aids fail right out of the gate, these criticisms could help you devise a more effective aid. Want to learn more about color vision? Well, consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on that 0F, 0F, 0F colored uh, button and turning it into hex uh, F2, F2, F2. Uh, 
Anyway, let's take a look at how Fruitone determined the color for their cards. They find some pictures online, sample the colors, hopefully perform some averaging, and then find the closest labeled Pantone color. But color is not some immutable characteristic of a fruit and will experience loads of variance independent of the state of ripeness. First, if it was actually meaningful to sample an object's color from a digital image, there would have been no worldwide controversy over the color of the dress. The color recorded in a photo is usually not a faithful representation of the color of the object, depending heavily on what is illuminating the fruit in the photo. Sampling some pixels RGB values in Photoshop, as seen here, will not get you a true color. Second, there is a lot of variance between different varieties of a given fruit. All of these mangoes are ripe, yet definitely not the same color. In fact, Fruitone's reference mango moves from green to purple, then back to yellow, orange, and red, but no mango variety does that. You can also see this with the ridiculous melon card. Like, which melon? Because a watermelon and a cantaloupe are not going to follow the same color changes. Third, even within one variety, there's a lot of variance in what color a ripe fruit can be. I analyzed dozens of pictures of Hayden mangoes and came back with its ripe and unripe colors covering these regions. Notice not only the large regions that count as ripe and unripe, but also the fact that they overlap. Plus, as I was scraping for pictures of mangoes tagged as ripe or unripe, I came across lots of crap like this, where the ripe mango is very obviously a mirrored and color shifted version of the unripe mango, or vice versa, and the colors are therefore meaningless. Just two weeks ago, I bought a sack of mandarins, which were bright green. Green and orange are a common confusion pair for the red-green colorblind, so when I brought them home, my wife made fun of me relentlessly as if I had just traded our cow for some magic beans. Neither of us had heard of green oranges before, but apparently it's normal, and they were actually super delicious. In any case, they would not have been accurately identified by a fruit tone card for oranges. Suffice it to say, your color model will be crap if your input data is crap. You can't just cherry pick your cherry colors from online pictures and create a useful tool. I'm sure they put a lot of work into Fruitone's development, but a robust tool would need a lot more work and in the end would still be a fundamentally ineffective aid for the colorblind. The developers of Fruitone could have avoided all of that effort if they had just started the design process by asking themselves one simple question that all inclusive designers should ask themselves. Can I reach the same end goal, that is a judgment of ripeness, by avoiding color altogether? Many designers of colorblind aids fail right from the get-go by not asking this question. They presume that since color is the most useful method for completing a task to them, that being colorblind renders us incapable of completing said task, but in reality, they just never learned the alternative methods for judging ripeness, many of which are more effective than color. These alternative methods are seldom known simply because color normals don't need to use them. So how is a poor, colorblind kid with no colorblind parents supposed to learn about them? Well, at the zoo, naturally. While the great apes are also trichromatic, New World monkeys, capuchins for example, have very polymorphic vision in that the males are always dichromatic or colorblind, while the females exhibit a broad spectrum of trichromatic vision that approximates normal human color vision. Considering capuchins eat almost nothing but wild fruit, how do the male monkeys do compared to their color-enhanced lady friends? Luckily, someone has written several papers about how boy and girl monkeys handle their guavas differently, and unsurprisingly, males rely much more on scent and touch than the females, especially on fruits like guava and persimmon, where I and my capuchin bros see very little change in color during ripening. Not only that, but the same authors found that firmness and smell are actually more reliable indicators of the nutritional value of the fruit than is color. In my video on how to cook meat for the colorblind, I showed why aids that help the colorblind judge the color of meat are ineffective since color is an indirect metric of doneness. 
like ripeness, doneness means a lot of things, but the primary transformation is the neutralization of harmful pathogens like salmonella. Secondary would be the change in texture and the increase in temperature, since these are also desirable qualities in and of themselves. And tertiary would be the change of color, since that is strictly an indicator of doneness and doesn't directly affect your enjoyment of the meat. Actually, the consensus on meat is that not even color normals should rely on color when a much more direct and precise metric of doneness is available. Temperature. Sorry, vegans. Back to fruit. Taking that same framework, the primary transformation during fruit ripening is the conversion of starches to simple sugars that makes the fruit yum. Then there are secondary transformations like softening, decreasing of tartness, and release of volatile chemicals that smell good. These are all indicators of the sugariness but are also desirable themselves. Then, again, there is color as the tertiary change, which is used almost exclusively as an indicator, since only rarely is the color itself the desirable quality. My mother, a color normal, taught me to smell pineapples and cantaloupes to judge ripeness, sniffing for those delicious volatile chemicals, but only because color normals don't detect any significant color change during ripening of those fruits. It's therefore culturally normalized to use your nose, but I have never seen someone sniffing bananas in the green grocers. And that's unfortunate, because those smell changes also occur in fruits traditionally identified by color. Seriously, be brave. Go sniff some green and yellow bananas. There's a clear difference. You may look odd sniffing up a banana in the produce aisle, but you shouldn't let the normies shame you into struggling with color when you can manage just fine with your sniffer. Or instead, just squeeze it. Bananas actually soften quite predictably with ripeness, a fact that is often overshadowed and forgotten because of the whole green-yellow business. I find squeezing the short tip of the banana is the best place to gauge the ripeness, but it also doesn't leave a bruise. Kiwis, pears, mangoes, I squeeze them all! And get your mind out of the gutter. If you're worried about fruit-borne COVID or whatever, stick your hand through a plastic bag. And if you're worried about bruising the fruit, squeeze near the stem and don't squeeze harder than you'd squeeze your best friend's nipple. Look, Fruitone was never commercialized. As far as I can tell, it was just some student design project and they probably got an A for it because most color normals don't really understand how color vision works in the end. I don't want to be overly critical of colorblindness aids and assistive tools because they are important. But even more important is for the colorblind to not be apologetic about your condition. Embrace your inner capuchin. Sniff that banana. This is Chromophobe. <laughs>